He speaks, Father, in the name of Jesus. None of me speaks, but you, Father God, you speak. Holy Spirit, speak for me in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you right now that you give me unction to function in the name of Jesus. That the words don't fall on deaf ears, Father God, but we shall take it and we shall run in the name of Jesus. As this word is being ministered and the words are being ministered, they minister to us, ourselves first in the name of Jesus. Father God, I bless you and I give your name praise and and glory in the name of Jesus. My topic is continue on and finish well. The question is, what time is it? Whenever I say what time is it, I want you to say continue on and finish well. So what time is it? <laughs> it is time to put away the toys and games. Pack up bitterness and kick out depression. It's time to get to work. It's time to leave the lesser things behind and go after the things that will cause men to chase after God. The things that matter to God. It's time to really walk, talk, and live with purpose. To walk hand in hand with God's plans and purpose for our lives. In Psalms 139, 13 to 16, this is the NIV version. It says, for you created my innermost beings. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that at that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw me. My unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I bless God because I'm here. Now... <laughs> My mother and father got together, and it wasn't in their plan to have me. When my mother found out she was pregnant, my father told her to go and have it aborted. <laughs> but because God had an awesome plan for my life, she was given the money by my father to go to the doctor to go and have the whatever done operation or abortion, whatever it is. She went, the doctor was not there. When she finally went to go back now, the doctor let her know, if you do this, you will take your life and take the life of this child as well. But it was in God's plan that I'm here. I'm here because he have a greater purpose for fulfilling my life and to share with others. Because if he did not, if it wasn't so that he designed it, that I almost got about it, but I'm still here. Still here. The seeds that came out of my womb would not be here. Esther, Elisa, Josiah, Jordan, even Eliza would not have come forth. But, but because of purpose. Amen? What time is it? It's time to continue on and finish well. It doesn't matter how you start. You might stumble a lot or lag behind for a while, but it's how you finish. What time is it? Continue on and finish well. I need five volunteers. Five, five persons, five. Don't all come at once. Five, 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 five. I have one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. <laughs> yes, amen. Yes. Okay, pick a number. Pick a number. One to five. Pick a number. One, four, three, five, two. That's one. That's four. This is three, five, two. Okay. All right. Number three. Okay. Now, the five volunteers, they are horses. <laughs> they, are, they are horses, okay? No, we can't move it. It's okay. I don't think nobody will get hurt. It'll be okay. 
what well, they'll maybe fall and fall under the anointing of the Holy Spirit <laughs> and get up and be healed Amen. and resurrect some dead. Amen? Amen. Okay. Y'all going to start from the back and go around twice. That's inside the church. Around twice. Okay? Outside. Start from here. Start from here and then you're going to go around. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Inside the church, yes. Now, this is a horse race. Watching a horse race here. And I'm the commentator. Now, there are five horses on the lineup. The gun is already fired and they're on the way. They're on the way. Now, number two is off in the front. Number one is in the front. Number four, number three, and number two is lagging behind. But we get, we're getting there. 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 <laughs> I said twice. Some of y'all went three times. But <laughs> As you notice, number one was out in the front, way in the front leading. Number four and number three, two was lagging behind. They were coming right on the heel. But nobody noticed number three came from the back and crept up and win. Win the race. He listened to two laps and he came around twice. Some of y'all went three and four times. But he listened. Okay, thank you. You can have a seat. <laughs> you see, it didn't matter who started first. It didn't matter that number three didn't, wasn't in the front. But he came from behind, and he still was able to win. Now, there was a horse by the name of Sil Silky Sullivan. It was an American thoroughbred race, race horse. Best known for his, his come from behind racing style. Also known as the California Comet. Silky once allowed the field to get 41 lengths in front of him and still won by three lengths. To accomplish this, he ran the last quarter in 22 seconds. It says here, Willie Shoemaker, which was his trainer, once said, Silky Sullivan, you can't do a thing with him. You just have to allow him to run his own race at his own speed, in his own style. In the first quarter, or maybe the first, eight, first three eighths, and just sit there and wait, hoping that you won't be late waiting too long. Because when he really gets going, you have to be alert, or you might just be left behind and hold on for their life. <laughs> so it didn't matter how number three started. What matters is that he finished well. So what time is it? Continue on and finish well. In Ephesians 2, verse 10, in the NIV version, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Apostle Paul has challenged us to be faithful to who the Lord is calling us to be and what the Lord is calling us to do. What time is it? It's time to continue on and finish well. The time is short. The last days are here. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 5, in the NIV version again. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful, unholy without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing to do with such people. There are too many people playing church. They have a form of godliness but not really delivered. They have memorized scriptures after scriptures, even in multiple versions, but it's not reality to them. They have abandoned sound doctrine while tolerating, condoning, and living in sin. They have rejected God's values and standards and made cute excuses and labels for their lifestyle. Now, if you notice in American society, whenever something comes up, they find a cute little name to give it. 
an acute excuse as why that person is operating the way they are doing. If a child is not longer behaving in the classroom, they say, okay, well, maybe he has some kind of attention deficit, um, ADD or ADHD, let's give him some medication. But has anybody really stopped to find out why that child is behaving like that? What is his home like life? Does he even sit down at all at home? What is his diet like? Has he gotten good stuff to eat? Is he just eating candy? No, they don't do that. They just sit there and label it and give it medication. So in the body of Christ, why are we labeling the way we behave and can't kind of making acute excuses for it? Oh, that's just the way I am. You know, I'm just, you know, bold like that. So it's okay for me to just be rude. And it's okay for me to just sit up just to you any kind of how. And you know what? But you know, that's just how I is, you know? But it, God love you still. No. Making cute excuses for the sin. We can't be like the American society and make cute excuses and give it medication. Because the medication isn't doing anything. It's not curing it. It's just covering it up. So we don't need no more medication. We need a, the direct medicine and to drink of the blood of Jesus to be delivered. Bless the name of the Lord. In 2 Timothy 3 and 13, it said, While evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. We have to have a spirit of discernment so that we don't fall prey to the deception. Because the deception is not just on the outside, it's on the inside too. They come in and they sit down right next to us. So we have to be able to discern what is happening, when to move, when to pray, when to worship, when to praise, and when to just sit and be still. What time is it? Continue on and finish well. It is time for God's people to rise up. In the midst of darkness and dece deception, there is an urgency of light and truth to come forth. Who will stand? When the wind blows and the earth shakes, who will stand? In a dark room, it just needs one light. One light. Who will be that light? Though the stone, though they stone you with their words, who will stand? Who will be the light? Paul was the one in the dark prison to encourage Timothy. But if you looked at it, shouldn't Timothy have been the one encouraging Paul? Paul was in the one locked up in prison. Timothy was on the outside. But Paul understood his purpose. God was able to use him in the prison. The prison was dark, but Paul was the light. He was able to see what no one else saw. That way he was able to see how a soldier gets dressed. God gave him insight as how we are to get dressed. In Ephesians 6, 11, 18. I can kind of turn there. It says, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may know, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand there, therefore, having your loins girt with truth. Having your loins girt with truth, the belt of truth. We are most vulnerable in that area. Men as well as men. Men as well as women. Many men and women have fallen because they have been caught with their belt off. We got to tighten our belts. Now, if you notice, he didn't put on his breastplate first. He put on his belt first. So you can't walk around naked without your belt. How much of us are walking around without our belts on, without the belt of truth? We are living lives of lies and not the truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness guarding our heart. Do we really guard our hearts with all diligence? Or are we letting all kind of polluted stuff get into our hearts? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Feet. How you walk. How is your walk? Are you walk, when you walk, do you intimidate the devil or the devil intimidating you? Our walk is so important because how are you going to 
speak to and witness to somebody and if your walk is crooked. You don't have your belt on, you don't have on your breastplate of righteousness, and you don't have on your shoes, but then you want to witness to me. But glory to God. city. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith. Do we really believe? Or are we still doubting God? Do we really use our faith? Or are we just sitting down there and complaining? Complaining about what the devil is doing to us and what the devil did and how the devil is doing this. But what are we doing? Are we standing on faith? Are we exercising our faith? Or our faith has gone to sleep and it's shrunken and it's, there's nothing there left. And take the helmet of salvation. Has our minds been renewed? Are we walking around with a bunch of junk in our minds? Our minds must be renewed first. Because how can we really be the people that God is calling us to be if our minds are all cluttered with a lot of junk? The sword of the spirit, which is the word, sorry, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching therefore with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The sword of the spirit, God's word. Do we know God's word? Or we live in God's word? Or we just memorize it and be able to spit it back out at certain times? But do we really know what we're saying? It is our responsibility and privilege to pass on the good news of our Lord to others. It is time we must be able to boldly testify about our Savior and Lord and not be ashamed or afraid. We can't be ashamed of God of all or what he has done for us. This great gift must be passed on to our next generation. The message must be passed on correctly and accurately. We have been trained for this. We are responsible to pass on the true gospel, not compromising God's word to suit ourselves or to suit others, to make it sound cute so that people will start to follow us, but to tell them, thus said the Lord, and not taint it, and not add to it or subtract from it. It is time to get ready and be ready. What time is it? To continue on and finish well. It's time that we truly focus on God. Focus on Jesus Christ. It's time to us to fix our thoughts and hearts firmly on him. It is the word of God that equips us to minister in a world filled with darkness and deception. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God be made perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Our world is increasingly rejecting the truth. But it is the knowledge of the truth that is, makes it possible for people in error to come to their senses. Escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive. Who will stand? Who will stand in the gap for these people? Who will stand in the gap for the souls that are lost? In 2 Timothy 2, 2 chapter 2, 25 to 26. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, pre-adventured, will give them repentance to the acknowledgement, acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. What time is it? Time to continue on and finish well. It's time to continue on despite hardship, opposition, and persecution. Paul wrote words of encouragement while in his prison cell. Iron bars didn't stop Paul from pushing on. He could have had a pity party all by himself because he was in the prison and it would look like the others of them should be encouraging him. But because he knew his purpose and he understood why he was on the earth and 
not the fact that he's in prison will stop him from speaking God's word and living for God. Now, I, myself and my husband started a business doing home care. And this business has taught me a whole lot about life and people and myself. Now, I've had employees, I've had different clients, and I have had to take this same message and apply it to my life to continue on and finish well. Many of times I have had staff members make all kind of accusations, take my name to Department of Labor, saying I didn't pay them, they wasn't paid their rightful pay, they went in to work and I didn't give them this amount of money, and a lot of accusations, and it came left and right, back to back, to the point where when I would check the mail, anytime I saw something from the Department of Labor, I would go, oh God, what is it now? What is it now? What is it they're saying now that I didn't do? And these are not people that were not saved. These were people that are Christian people that live and say that they're living for God. And they would go to work, leave before it's time for them to work. They will put on their time sheet that they was there when they wasn't there. And still tell the Department of Labor that I didn't pay them for their time. And turn around the Department of Labor, listen to them, and I will still have to pay them for the time. And I'll be saying, God, am I really supposed to be doing this business? Am I really supposed to be doing this? Day after day, when it wasn't this, it was that. When it wasn't the clients acting up, they didn't want to pay on time. Oh, the person came like five minutes late, so they didn't want to pay the full pay. Oh, from one thing to the next. I'm saying, God, should I really be doing this? But not because the opposition I was receiving, I was getting, it doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to be doing it. It's for me to continue on and finish well. Continue on and push. Because despite all of the hardship, despite the, all the accusation, and many days of crying, of wailing, of crying, of wailing, saying, God, you got to do something. You got to do something. God has turned it around tremendously. Hallelujah. Tremendously. And I had to take my, this same message and continue on and finish well. I was able to minister to some of the, even the employees. Some of them got saved. I was able to minister to some of the clients. Before they die, they give their life to God. So I'm saying, if I had stopped, those souls would have been lost. Those would have been lost. But I had to endure the persecution, the lies, the hardship, the nagging, the talking about me behind my back. They'd be right in the office, working and doing that kind of thing against me. But I had to keep pushing. Because it's not about me. It's about the purpose that God has to fulfill in this, the lives of these people. Yes, you will be talked about, but keep pushing. They will bring accusations against you, still push. When a woman is given birth, despite the pain, she has to push. Despite the fact of whether or not the father is in the birthing room, she has to push. Whether or not her friends are there with her, she has to push. Whether or not the father even claiming that he ain't the father. She has to push. Whether or not she don't even know how the bill is going to be paid, she has to push. Because the gift with inside of her has to come forth. She cannot contain it. If she hold the gift, it will either kill her, she kill the gift, or both of them die. So the question is, are you killing your gifts? Are you killing the gifts that God has placed in you? And you're just there sitting and containing it. Because of opposition and persecution, you're just keeping the gift inside and you're stifling the gift. The gift is being starved. Are you going to push beyond the hardship, beyond the pain, beyond the excruciating pain that you feel like you're going to die? You got to push. You got to push. We either kill ourselves, we kill the gift, or we both we kill everything. Are you a murderer? Are you a murderer? Are you killing the gifts that God has placed in you? There's somebody that needs that gift that is within you. The gift that is in me is not for me. 
What's in you is not for you. It's to release to someone else. God is able to work power, powerfully on his people as we push through hardship and oppositions. What time is it? It's time to continue on and finish well. It's time to let the rivers flow to our bellies. To let the rivers truly flow and not stifle it. How much of us are sitting and trying to contain God's gift and not releasing it? What God placed in you is not for you. You cannot contain it. It is giving you pain and discomfort. That's why you must release it. The souls are waiting for us to bring God's word to them. But we are just sitting and looking cute. You're getting sore through it because you wouldn't open your mouth. Your stomach giving you crumbs because you wouldn't release the rivers out of your belly. If you would only be obedient to what God is telling you to do, to do and to say it, you will see how God moves in this land. That's why Jeremiah would feel physical pain and discomfort. Until he released what God told him to say, he would be discomforted. Right now, most of you are sitting down there discomforted because you're not releasing the gift that God has given you. You're sitting on the gifts because, oh, that's for pastor to do. Oh, that's for Sister Christopher to do. Or that's for somebody else to do. But God has given each and every one of us a unique gift that we must release to in this land. What time is it? Continue on and finish well. It's not easy to be... It's easy to be distract, distracted and discouraged and hold back. But we must continue on because God is still at work. His word is not chained up, is not bound up, is not locked up. The lost will be saved and the saved will be encouraged and strengthened. Hardship are not meant to kill you. They are meant to strengthen you and give you more wisdom. So the charge is to continue on and finish well. Yes, they're going to talk, but let them talk. Continue on and finish well. There are souls that are waiting for you. There are souls that are waiting for the gift that God has placed in you for this earth. We shall not sit on it anymore. Do not be a murderer. And sit and contain the gift. Kill yourself. Kill the gift. And souls being lost. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah, what time it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't put that sermon too far away, my son. I tell you, don't put it too far. Don't put it too far. Uh, we got to bring it back to the church. It's time to what? And finish what? I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I get, I'm getting a lot of sermons. But my sermons for the whole year, I set. I hear sermons of the sermons up in here. And this morning while I was preaching, I got a sermon. Mispa. Mispa, the place of prayer, the place of a watching, the place when you have an emergency to gather. I got that one. I'm gonna preach just on Mispa. Watch me on television and TBN. Mispa. Oh, somebody said Mispa. It will work. It will work. It would work. There's anointed and Mispa. Oh, what an anointed word. Amen. Amen. Well, the next person gonna come up is um, Minister Van der Poel. Amen. A warrior. Hey, she's halfway from around my places. You don't want to say she's from Jayad, but she's halfway from Jayad. Just up. A little diagonal from my mom. I was raised in Jayad. I'm proud to say I was raised in Mrs. Sarah Tenement Yard. Some of you don't know that name, but that was a long time ago. I, I was meeting with the, some officials, you know, with um, well, the guy is the chief of police. What his name is? Dwayne. And I told Dwayne, I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I was in, right over there in Jayad talking. So they, the police had a little get together. So I was with them. I said, you know, I'm a product. I stood up and represent Jayad. I said, I'm from Jayad. They said, not you. I said, I say, I live right there still. Uh, watch me drive through. Go show you my thing. Yes! Somebody said, Hallelujah. And they were interrogating me. They could not believe it. Yeah, yeah, they could believe it. So, she, so this is it. So out of Jayad can come mighty warriors.